as we went through chemistry, we talked about physical changes and chemical changes. And at a point in time, we're going to make a physical change in this hair. But we've got to start with the physical part of it, which is rolling the perm. You already have a little experience, so that helps you a little bit with rolling. So the very first part of any perm is wetting the hair, usually shampooing it to make sure there's no spray or styling gels or anything, sectioning, and then rolling. And that is the physical part of a perm. If we stop there and don't use any chemicals, then we can easily reverse what we've done. So what we want to talk about today is the perm wrap itself and what it determines. And a lot of people think if you don't leave the solution on there very long, you'll have nothing but a body wave. But the fact of the matter, the size of the rod controls how much curls in there. When you use a small rod, you get a lot of curl. When you use a large rod, you get very little curl. So you always want to take that into consideration when choosing the tool, which is what they're called now instead of rods. I was trained on rods. When you're choosing the tool, you want to make sure you're choosing the correct thing for what the client has requested. And I think one of you told me you'd went to get a perm and wound up with a bunch of curl when all you'd wanted was a little body from it. Also, we're going to go over the different types of um, perm rods as we go through this because they give different effects also. First thing we want to talk about is sectioning and why it's important. You wouldn't go buy a bunch of lumber and a bunch of bricks and have somebody start building a house without a plan, would you? Because what would you wind up with? A mess. A mess, a crooked mess. And the same thing is going to apply with the perm, and that's why we do the sectionings, so that we have uniform working panels, and our rods are neat, and they're in the area they should be in, and we don't have hair from here on a rod or two way back here. And that's what the sectionings and partings do for us. We want them to be smooth, and we're going to go over that at a later time of the different types of sectionings we can do. I started you all out with the straight set. Nine sections. One, two, three, four, five, six in the back. Seven, and we put a top section here, eight, nine. There is some perms that do not use that many sections. Whenever we use the straight set, we're going to use horizontal partings, meaning running with the horizon. Sometime with a spiral wave, you're going to do vertical, so you wouldn't use this type of sectioning. And there's a rule with rolling perms also, and you section with this in mind. Hair has a growth pattern. Everybody's does. And if you've got a calyx somewhere, you know there's a sudden change in growth pattern. All of this hair is growing down and suddenly we've got some follicles sticking the other direction, so that hair wants to go in that direction. We do never, do not ever roll against a growth pattern because when it goes through the chemical processing, it will break that hair, especially the bands that's on our rods. That is why when I told y'all to roll the front two rods forward, you didn't want to roll against this growth pattern because this growth pattern usually goes like this around the hairline. If you're going to do vertical wraps on the sides, you never roll them back. You've got to roll them forward so you're not pulling against the growth pattern again because all hair on the head has a growth pattern. Some of you have complained you cannot get your rods to lay down straight on these mannequins or lay down tight, and the reason for that is there's no growth pattern in the mannequin heads. We can purchase more expensive mannequins and they do have the growth patterns where this grows down and this grows down and it grows like it should or comes out of the head like it should, but they're very expensive. And with these, every follicle is just shooting straight out from wherever it's at and that's what makes the rod want to push up. So that's what sectioning is. We want to know what a base section is. Once we've got our big sections, we're going to take what they call a base section it should be the size of the rod. So if we've got a rod this big, then the section should be that big. So this will, f will fit right on it if that's how we see fit to put it there. We've got a rod this big, we're going to have a bigger base section because we're putting a larger tool there. Base control, and that's where we're talking about where are we going to put it on the base. If we want a lot of tension 
and a lot of volume, and that means the hair is going to stand up more, we're going to do an on base. And I want to show you what an on base is because at this point you've not seen anything but your half off base. And I'm going to explain to you why you were not started off um, with an on base. And you may want to get up and look, and if you do, that's fine. Half off base, we held the hair just like this, always straight from its section. Base section. The base section was here, we held it straight up. If the base section was here, we held it straight out. If it was here, we held it straight out from that. But when we roll for an on base, we're going to over direct, meaning we're going to hold it at this angle. And as we roll it down, that will allow us to set it right on its base. You will find that your rods are tighter when you do that. But it puts more stress on the hair. And unless the client just insists upon having an awful lot of volume, you don't want to use this one because it's very stressful for the hair but you will notice it sits right on its base and it's tighter than half off. All right, we know what half off is, but I'm going to hold one just for the record for that. We hold it straight up. On base, we did this. Half off, we did this. And off base, we're going to under direct and hold it right here and roll one up. And it will not sit on its base at all. It will sit right behind it. A couple of times I've come by and fussed with y'all because you had this space here. And that's what was happening. You were rolling it under-directed. Under-directed means that the hair is like it should be in about four or five weeks after you've given a perm with a half off. You've already given them some new growth. And clients fuss about that a lot because they say they got to get a perm sooner. It gives the least volume, meaning the client's not going to go out with her hair real poofy after we, you know, rolled it under-directed or off-base. Is there a time for off-base rolling since the book mentioned it? Yes. When do you think we would use the off-base Maybe this client doesn't want volume. She just wants the body to hold her curl. Maybe she's wearing her hair just turned under and she just wants it to be where to hold there. We would use that. So there is a time and place for the off base. The next thing we want to talk about is the direction of our bases. And I told you all of these bases are going to be horizontal for us in a straight back. So why is base direction important? Remember, we're going to chemically alter this hair on the rods. So why is base direction important? Because that hair is now going to want to go in the direction we've rolled it in. If we've got a client, and we do have a lot of them that do this, they want their hair permed. They want to go home and shampoo it, put a little mousse in it or a little styling product in it, run out the door, let it dry on the way to work. So we may want to change directions because she may not want it all down. We may go into vertical. We may go into diagonal. But those are the base directions you use. Or we may make a mixture of it. According to how does she want to wear her hair. If she's wanting to wear a part here, we're going to roll this down. She may want to wear this a little bit forward. Do we're going to put a vertical one here. And she just may want a little soft blend of it. And that's when we come with our diagonal rollings. And diagonal can go either way. So we've got horizontal, vertical, diagonal is right between the two. And our wrapping techniques. I showed you to wrap the croconol method, and that's where one layer of hair is rolled right over another. That's how I roll this rod. The other method is spiral wrapping. And this is where it actually makes a spiral, like the spiral staircase or corkscrew shape. Matter of fact, this rod looks kind of this way, and everybody that wants to learn spiral perms wants to learn with this rod. It is a spiral rod. We have a whole selection of them. This is absolutely the worst one you can choose because hair has got to be an exact length to really work well on this. So I'm not going to even demonstrate it. If you want to work with it later, you may. Um, 
We've got the little bands here. The hair has got to be clipped on it, on the rod with it. So hair has got to begin and end in a certain place. And then this is clamped right on top of it. It's hard to get the hair and the paper on this. This is something they come out with because they knew we would get them knowing they looked like a corkscrew and that's how we wanted the hair to wind up looking. So what we usually use when we do the spiral wrap is we can use our rod just like we have here or either we can use benders or foam rods. And I'm going to see if I can get so you can see and roll one. And if you notice, I'm going to go in a vertical direction this time with spiral because what are we wanting if we're rolling on a spiral rod? We want it to hang down like that instead of hang down like that. Choosing your spiral rod or your bender or your hard rod, this is called a bender and it, it's, it's not real hard like this is, but it, it's, it's a harder substance. This is foam, and it's got a wire in there, and I can bend it anywhere I want to make it stay. I can bend just a little bit of the ends if I want the hair to go all the way along the rod. So which am I going to choose to use? Why would I choose one over the other when they're, they're actually kind of look alike, except this one hooks back into itself, and this one just bends over to hold it? And I know we haven't discussed this. Would I be concerned about this absorbing my chemicals? Yeah. I would be really concerned about it absorbing my chemicals. It does have a little coating on it, but if you see what's happening to the rod is, as you begin to bend it. Also, the ends sometimes come off. I wouldn't be overly concerned about it because of the coating on there, but I would be a little bit concerned about it. But they roll and wrap the same way. I like this better because I can put it at any length I want to. This is going to be a circle regardless of where I put it, which means if I've got hair here all the way around, this is going to be looped and this is going to be laying flat to the head, and I'm fixing to show you so you'll understand what I'm talking about. So I actually prefer the way this works. Personally, I roll most of my spiral wraps on the concave rods. And the reason I do that is because I've, I've got more control over it. I can take this band and clip it in any place I want to. But if the hair is excessively long and they want a spiral wrap, we've got to do something with a longer rod. We are going to use our end paper. We may start at the ends or we may start at the scap when rolling spiral on a spiral rod. But we always want our end papers. We do not use these with a wet set when we're not using chemicals. But we always use them when we do a perm to make sure our ends are smooth and do not become cramped. We want to start at one end of the rod and we're going to start spiraling down. So we're not going to put the hair over the hair. And it kind of looks like a, a tennis racket the way the handle's wrapped. And then we just come over with our rod that's popped right out of my paper. When you have that to happen, you can always put another end wrap over it because we want those ends to stay smooth. That was cut at an angle. and You just wrap your paper around it, smooth those in, and then bend your rod to hold it in place. You may put the bender on top of the rod. You may bend it up to the rod, and it'll stay right there. And do your spiral wrap all over. But again, let's look at how it spiraled on, and it will spiral right off. Starting at the scalp makes it a little more difficult, but it gives you a little more curl at the scalp. And again, the end wrap's going to go on the ends. And you just start and wrap the same way, remembering not to overlap hair over hair. And pull your rod down, put your paper over it. Clamp it off. All right. You like the spirals? I, I do. I, I kind of like that. The thing is, with it, we don't have a proper sectioning for it. None of us has come up with that yet. And sometimes we wind up with a rod where we need to go next, and we've got to be flipping them over, so they get a little aggravating about that. It is until you get a good many in the head, and then it becomes a problem. 
Now these, the one advantage of them is they will stand up. So they're more or less out of your way, but sometimes you've got to clip it up until you get a few in there, and then they'll begin to stand as you have them. All right, let's talk about our rods for a moment. We have straight rods, and we have concave, and this is concave. And if you will notice, the diameter is a little more on each end than it is in the middle, and this is the most commonly one used. And if you notice this the diameter is the same way all the way across. And we do have the rods like this that are straight rods or all the way across. But what happens when we use a straight rod with this type is the hair wants to come off of the ends and get tangled up in our bands, our ends of it. One company has come out and put us a little side body on there, and I like that better. But the complaint some people have with concave, and this is what 99% of your perms are given on, is the concave rods. What some people have a complaint on, but I think is such a small difference it doesn't really matter, is that the ends, that's the first thing you begin wrapping around the rod, have a lot more curl than the hair does your top layer. And if we unroll this, you can kind of see. And I, I think it's not enough difference to fuss over. You're talking about, what, a sixteenth of an inch more curl. But some people really believe, and if you'll notice now, once we put hair on top of hair, the the, the um, curl is going to get a little bit larger. But do you really think it's going to be enough to to make a whole lot of difference? I don't. And the, the reason they're concave is because it helps to hold the hair in the center here so that it will process evenly and not get tangled up. Our end papers, I always get tickled at this, and this actually is not a joke, but I, I used to have students that come in and, and still do occasionally, and they want to go home and they're going to practice their perms. As a matter of fact, their neighbor wants a perm, and they went to Walmart and they bought them a perm. And they've got their rods they've purchased here at school, and their one problem is they don't have any end papers. So they've got to try to decide what to do about that, and they either go buy them some cigarette papers, which you, you know, you roll your homemade cigarettes on, or they decide to take notebook paper and cut it up and use it. And they run into all kind of problems. The cigarette papers tear so easy. And if you notice, this is kind of tough. It will tear when it gets real wet, but this one's damp a little bit, and it still stands up. But these papers are specially made to let the chemicals through. And if we use other types of paper, what happens to the ends of our hair is the solution is not allowed to go in and penetrate to the end. So we've got some pretty curl here, and all of a sudden at the ends we have nothing. So make sure you get you some end wraps. Make sure you know how to use them. I started you off with the book in wrap, and that's where you fold it over, and it looks like a little book. I like to use the book in wrap because it gives me a lot of control. It doesn't give me any added papers. I never show the single in paper wrap because it is a nightmare, and I'll show you what it, it does. You don't have the control over the hair. With the single end paper wrap, all you do is place this end wrap on here, and it's hard to hold it and start rolling. If you're going to use a double end paper wrap, which I also have a problem with, unless this person has a lot of layers in the hair, the double end paper wrap, you t put two end papers. And my problem with that is I have just doubled my paper where my lotion now has to go to do my chemical processing, and I don't like that. You know, I don't want my lotion fighting with papers when it could go in and be curling hair. So that's your double, that's your single, and you know what the bookend is. They also have pre-folded, and I always get questions about, can I buy the pre-folded ones that come up out of the dispenser? Yes, you can. They're more expensive. The problem with them is we can fold these in half and lay them there and learn to pick them up. The problem with them coming out folded is one's going to come out right just like you need it. The other one's going to be just the opposite, so you've got to flip it over because they're connected one into the other. State boards, you cannot use the dispenser, so why, you know, worry about it. The next thing we want to go over is our different types of sections. and. Um, We've already seen the straight back, straight set, and that's the most commonly one used. It's called the basic perm wrap. 
Curvature perm wrap means we're going to put our rod in a circular motion for whatever reason. Usually it conforms to the shape of the head and it could be used as a style perm. The other one we're going, another one we're going to discuss is the brick lay. Now what happens with certain types of hair, and this is certainly true with thin hair or fine hair, is when we take this perm out of her hair and shampoo her, we've still got our sections left in there, which doesn't make for a pretty style. So what a brick lay is, where we've got this rod here and got our straight part, we're going to put the next rod, come over here and get some out of the other section so it looks just like they lay bricks. One here and one right next to it and then one covering that little gap. So we don't have any of these straight parts as we have this one. The next rod will not fit directly under this. It will fit half under it and half over here in this section. And the reason for that is to get rid of those partings that show in, in hair or that have a tendency to stay there. Most of these mannequins are going to keep your parts in them until you've shampooed them several times. The mannequins really don't care, but clients will fuss about it. Another technique to get rid of those partings is the weave technique. And the weave means you take your straight parting that would fit your rod, just like we've been doing with our straight back, and then we take our comb and just weave out part of it. We take a rat tail comb and weave in and out and in and out. And now we're going to roll something that doesn't have a straight part. Therefore, again, we don't have the straight line in there to be worried with. That's a little aggravating, and you wouldn't want to do the whole head that way, but in the front where it would particularly show, you might want to do that. It also puts more tension on the hair. And then we have the piggyback wrap or the double tool wrap as it's called. And what happens here, let's assume this hair was 18 inches long instead of the length we've got it now. And if we roll that many times around here, we would have hair just gobbed on there and our solution would not want to penetrate it. So what the double end or the piggyback is for excessively long hair and to make sure that we get it all rolled. And I hope this will work on this length hair. We take our paper and start in the middle of the section. We put our paper on. We roll that. I should have gotten a longer mannequin out here, but I'll see if this won't work. We roll it down, keeping these ends out. We fasten our rod. We come back and pick up the ends. Get another paper. Put it on and put another rod on top of that one. And this is really, um, you really need to do this when you've got excessively long hair. And then you just put one on top of the other and as you roll they'll stack up. It's called the piggyback. That is the only way you can put a lot of curl in hair that is yay long, unless you're going to find rods this big around, and they do make them that big around. But then that she'd only have, you know, just body. That way it wouldn't have to go around it so many times. Preliminary test curls. Now, I've got this client, and I've got a lot of experience with hair, and yet I'm a little bit frightened of perming this client's hair for whatever reason. Maybe she's been sick. Maybe she's had cancer and it's just come back. Maybe I feel like she's been putting some product on there that won't work well with my chemicals. So once I section the hair, I roll two or three rods. And I try to get in an area that I feel like may be a little resistant or may be a troublesome area. I put cotton around it. I don't want my solution coming in contact with anything but the two rods I've got in there. I go ahead and put my processing lotion on it. I watch my timing. I watch as the curl processes until it gets to where I feel like it's totally processed. I rinse it. I neutralize it just like I'm giving her the whole perm. Then I take them down and look at them. I now know how long it's going to take my perm to process. 
I know how much damage I'm going to have. I know if I've chosen the right side of, size rods to give them out of curl she wants. So everything turned out okay. I go ahead with the perm. I do not perm those two rods again, or those two rollers again. All right, questions? What would happen if those part, the two rods in the process will? I would know either I could not give her a perm or I had to change solutions, meaning I didn't use one strong enough, or I would look at my rods and see. It's according to exactly what we mean when we say it didn't turn out right. We'll go into that as we get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me, the chemistry part of it. We'll go into how to regulate that and what to do about it. It may even be if they didn't turn out right that we'll have to curl them over again when we do the whole head. But it does give us a lot of information. And it didn't turn out, let's say it didn't turn out right. Isn't it wonderful we didn't do but two rods? A lot of people don't want to take the time to do those preliminary test curls. But wouldn't have been, we've rolled the whole head now and it didn't turn out right and we didn't do preliminary test curls. So they're vitally important if there's any question about the hair. If this is somebody you've been doing their hair for a long, long time and you've given them perms before and you're accustomed to working with it and you know what's on that hair and you kind of know her history, then you know what to do. And you've got your records from previous treatments. But if, if in doubt and if there is any doubt, it's best to do those preliminary test curls to indicate those things. Any other questions? All right, we're ready to roll perms. <laughs>